Welcome to week four of season four of After Fours After Hours Gaming League. We have the StarCraft 2 match between Blackberry and Bungie here for your enjoyment. And this is going to be an unlife cast because I was away, was not able to cast these games live. So they're being cast from beyond the grave now. And the first matchup is going to be a Zerg versus Terran. Blackberry versus Bungie on Alter Zeem Stronghold. In the bottom right corner, we have the blue Zerg for Team Bungie. It is Chuck Dickens. And up in the actually slightly vertically higher position. In the bottom right, we have for Team Blackberry the Red Terran, Prof Frank. Now, this is the first time in Blackberry's HGL. What was that? My god. He's lost already. No! No! <laughs> Prof Frank, what are you doing? <laughs> this is critical! Ah, don't sweat it. But that, that is a very, very interesting tactic. There we go. Mine games. Maybe the well-rested XTVs get a bonus to their mineral mining for a time. Like how World of Warcraft experience works. I don't know. Just that that individual control sometimes sometimes is pushing it. <laughs> anyway, let's see. Did his opponent do any better? Yes, all drones are mining. Great job. Now, as I was about to say, this is the first time in Blackberry's AHGL history that our opponent has also had a clan decal. I don't think this is Bungie's corporate logo. It's just a symbol that they like to use a lot. Uh, corporate logos aren't supposed to be used, so we're going to say that that's just cool. Really cool symbol there. That is very nice. It fits in against our Blackberry. So yeah, we're evenly matched in terms of style so far. Let's see, in terms of workers, evenly matched. In terms of scouting, no one's got any clue. So yeah, very even opening to this game so far. Oh, looks like Frank's taking the lead. Well, it happens. Hatch first, quite normal on this map. It's just so easy to get that expansion. I often see it go out in front instead. A bit bolder, because Terran's going to be going command center first. Well, they can't really attack you anyway, so you can easily get the creep spreading out the front much faster. And of course, taking a fast third hatch back in this protective position, no problem at all. No problem at all. So... We're not seeing anything particularly strange yet. The drone, which got stuck on the pathing, now we're going to manually verify, yes. Yes, that's a base. A good thing to do. I have, in the past, had the case where the drone didn't move quite right, and I thought that it was a um, uh, pathing blocked because of a wall, and it turns out I just told him to move the wrong place. So I misscouted and said my six pool or whatever against an empty base and felt really bad. Always worth just going up the ramp to check. And <laughs> looks like Prof. Frank has been hoisted upon his own petard. Went down and got trapped. Raising the, lowering the wall just too late. Oh, and now he's stuck. Oh, oh dear, Prof. Frank, you're always... Like, half an FCV behind on mining. Ah, oh, that's, that's such a minor edge that you've just given to your opponent. And it probably doesn't matter because we've got mules. So, don't worry. Terran can just mule. It's one easy way to compensate for not having a third base, not having the right number of SCVs. Any, any mistake you make, really. Just mules. And here we go. Two Marines versus two Zerg. Marines versus Zerglings. That was close. You shouldn't lose Marine, he came very close. Oh well. Denying scouting, very good there. I really think that the Zerglings should just run away in that case. Try and stay alive as long as possible because they're not going to kill anything. Just going to annoy, scout. Maybe find out that his unit composition will in fact be Marine. Don't need anything else, just Marine, that's good enough. 
And what else do we see from Zerg? We've got the Metabolic Booth. No Baneling Nest yet. Maybe he's feeling bold on the open spaces of this map. Relatively open map. Fairly easy to just, you know, go in. Mm, especially this big open section here. We're just looking at it because it's big and open. But yeah, with good surrounds on the Marines, until the Medivacs come in, Zerglings really can clean things up very nicely. Good map control. When the Marines are in small numbers, it's even easier. Looks like Prof. Frank is a little worried about those Zerglings moving, choosing to fill a bunker before heading down and taking his third. The Supply Depot partial wall in. Very conservative play. And here's the third from our Zerg player, so that was also relatively conservative, but not, not that conservative. Let's be honest. And the Baneling Nest, too. So, we've got the classic Zergling Baneling. We've got the classic hatred of the rocks. Everyone hates them. Except for that period early in the game where you don't want to get trapped in your base by pylons. Yep. Still more Zerglings. <laughs> and what happens with the Zerglings? They've just got their boost, haven't they? Yep. Needed to run a little farther, but that marine is going to be in trouble. Yes. No? No? Is he a safe? No. Partial walling from the gas guys are nice, but won't actually make any difference whatsoever. Because all I need is two Zerg wings or three Zerg wings to have surface area on him. Oh. And he sees the Zerg wings getting up now. Tech upgrades. Looks like he'll be able to easily get to his death bio army. In the meantime, is Zerg doing anything there? Fairly passive game so far, really. We've just got Zerglings doing a bit of prowling. A bit of checking on that third. Marines very comfortable in their concrete nappy there. Oh. <laughs> Should have had the army out there. Don't actually need bunker. Oh, doesn't even get the cancel. I, I don't know if it was worth that many zerglings, but it certainly is applying some psychological pressure to Prof. Frank. Being a little too conservative there against a very small number of zerglings. His opponent, in the meantime, just making drones. 20 drones at a time. Sounds good. Or it may be double the worker count. We're getting very close to it. Prof. Frank's going to have to make some damage happen here, where Zerg just gets bigger and bigger and bigger like a puffer fish. Until finally you just faint from seeing the size of those spikes. Oop. Interesting choice, getting a couple of Hellions out there. I see Hellions a lot as an opening. It's great as an opening. Uh, applying a bit of pressure, but now Zerg's just so droned up that I can stop it with almost anything, really. So better than not applying any pressure at all. It's able to clean up some of those forward scouting lanes. See if they manage to get any drone kills. Well, I definitely think the Prof. Rank needs to apply some pressure. I don't know how many drone kills these Hellions really need to get. Uh, he's not that far behind Nikami. He does have his third base. He does have mules. And he does have a big tech advantage. So if he can just keep Zerg from feeling comfortable and doing their plan... Might be. No? No, we're heading back. Okay, thus ends today's Hellion Harassed. Uh, but it did something. Look at these spines. Hmm. We're getting the upgrades and the lings all, only just now. Terran ahead on upgrades. Always good for the Terran. I, I, I think this sort of composition mix is where the upgrades come into play the most. Because it's just all these armies of large numbers of small units and the snowballing. The Zerglings just can't really do much if they don't have enough damage upgrades to overcome the Marines and the effective plus three or plus four armor that your medevac gives them. And of course with uh, enough armor the Marines bullets do nothing either so really just very Wires upgrades. Ooh, that's not an efficient trade. Hellions baiting out Banelings works as well, I suppose, as the ba baiting in ZBZ. Oop, here we come. Lots of Banelings. Looks like they're gonna finish. Will they get that juicy cluster of Marines? Mmm, well, Prof. Frank sees it. Marauders first. Let's see the micro. Oh, he's running. 
That's good. We're just moving right past the Marauders. Ooh, nope, not quite. Ooh, almost. Is it? No, no, explode, explode. Not quite. I'm splitting a bit late, but it looks like his opponent has decided not to engage that far anyways. Ah, Baneling speed. Must be what he's waiting for. Uh, needs to have Baneling left alive. Small problem. And there we go. Plenty of Marines left alive for Prof. Frank. He's going to be able to get in here and do a lot of damage. I'm not seeing any more Banelings. Just massive amounts of Zerglings with the upgrade advantage this far behind. The Medivac, I don't see Zerglings cutting it here. Prof. Frank's going to get at least a third. All these Overlords, maybe. Ooh, just stimming in, charging in there. Ooh. <laughs> Zerglings barely managing to make the Marauder's health go down. At least he's getting those Banelings. He needs those Banelings. He's going to snipe the hatch. It's gonna happen. There we go. Prof. Frank has done all the damage he needs. Massive economy advantage now. What's the worker count look like? Worker count looks even. Ouch. And, you know, didn't quite manage to pick up everyone there. But he saved something. And he got the third. I think that that's definitely a big win for Prof. Frank. Of course, now that Chuck has his Banelings out, it's gonna be hard to get some damage, more damage in. He's going for it. Might be a bit bold. It over bold. Ooh. <laughs> and the spare drones getting pulled after the Banelings and the Marauders might have wanted to keep those alive. Stutter stepping the tanks. And yeah, just. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. Upgrades. Still only 1 1 for Zerg. Just building massive amounts of only Zerglings. When he's behind on upgrades, now there's two armies. Marauders with three armor. These Zerglings with six damage. All you need is a Marauder wall in front on the ramp and you're invulnerable. Looks like he's decided to just sit there. Let the spine crawler bleed out. And the reinforcements come trickling in. You know, has he spotted the ninja base? He has not. He knows what's in that base though. It looks like he is going to try and scout for that ninja base, which is not really producing. He'll get that easily before it can become decisive. Three base Ter Terran versus two base Zerg. Not not really where you want to be as Zerg. Unless you're doing some crazy tech swarm host viper thing. Unfortunately, we're just seeing Ling Bay Muta. And when I say Muta, I mean four Muta. The turrets, I think they're up in time. Not the best placement though. Plenty of uh, exposed flanks. Could do something, but no. He's going to do something by going into the base. And it's Zerg Ling Bay Ling trying to get that bio ball. Not getting a good Banelang hits, and that's the only thing that can help it now. And it's a massive drone pull. The Mutalisks finally being built, but I think it's too late. No. Quickly, Mutalisks. Kill everything. They won't. Still far too many Marines. Far too many Marauders to soak up the Banelang hits. No, it's far too few Banelang to get them in anyways. And I think that's it. Prof. Frank taking out the main. Scouted the ninja over there. It's quite, quite contained. All this focus firing with the Marines is actually giving the Mutas a chance to deal some damage. Okay, he stopped that. The Mutas are getting the damage dealt back to them. Ouch. Uh, maybe overstemming. No Medivac energy left here. I don't know. And the Marines are gone. The Mutas can clean this up. Medivacs need to get out of there. But the thing is, is this a recoverable position by Chuck Dickens at this point? He doesn't have a hidden base. He has one mining base. He's lost his lair. I mean, losing all those medevacs is not good at all for Prof. Frank, but I think he can lose a lot more and still be ahead. How's it look on the worker count? 70 to 26. You don't see that often. And of course, he's rebuilding nothing but Marines, so those mutas are going to have a tough time. Oh, here we go. Marine flank on the mutas. Not quite. Nope. Nope. That was a bad move there. Mutas can easily take these scab Marines. Might be able to pick off a tank. Need to keep them together. Just a small marine numbers as they trickle across the map. But there are some big marine numbers. That'll make them scurry away. Oh, and there, they're kind of trapped. Losing a Mutalisk again. And you know, the Mutalisk can fly away forever, but... Can't really defend the base. Maybe they'll run off, try and get some more damage done. I'm really not sure. Just not much Chuck Dickens can do here. Just the endless waves of raw recruits handed their rifle. They're drugs and told to get busy. They're doing it. Up here, mutalisks. 
Taking off reinforcements, I like it, but it's just not enough. Especially when those reinforcements are marines. The SCVs, they're a little confused. Ooh, ooh. Very harsh. And now, of course, we've got the hatcheries falling, base falling, the second detachment heading up to take out that hidden expansion. And not quite enough energy for Manor Mules, but he's gonna try. Oh, massive Banelings. The Manor Mule might have been a bit early. Ooh. Oh, got some good connections there. Got almost all the Marines. Bring the Mutalists back. He could clean this up. Those Mules can't even repair the Marauders. They can't attack. They're so... They just feel so useless. But the cost of all those Banelings, don't forget. I think that it was such inefficient running through the Marauders to get to all... And their concussive shells to get to the Marines. Probably lost more minerals and Banelings than he killed in Marines. And the gas. If he had a bank, it's gone now. What am I kidding? Of course it's not gone. This is the After Hours Gaming League. A league where we have fun, where we're not professional players. And there's banks aplenty. Come on, let's see 20 more mutilists. You can win this, Chuck! Not sure if I believe just yet. Mo Doom drop time. There we go, and he GG's. Thus bringing the first win for Blackberry. 1-0. Plenty of time for Bungie to bring it back in the next game.